Hello. In this Northfield History Podcast, I'll tell you about the Lockwood, Schofield, and Buraker buildings. These three buildings are typical 19th century commercial buildings. While they may not be as impressive or historic as other buildings in downtown Northfield, each has an interesting story to tell about the businesses that occupied them and the forces that shaped their present appearance. I'll start with the Lockwood building, and when I'm finished, you can walk further down the street and I'll tell you about the Schofield and Bioraker buildings. The first thing you'll notice as you stand across the street from the Lockwood Opera House is that it does not look much like something built in 1872. Compare its current appearance with this one from more than a hundred years ago. Like many downtown buildings, the Lockwood has been remodeled several times since it was built by Ephraim Lockwood. The first commercial buildings built in Northfield were all made of wood. One or two story affairs, they were likely put up pretty quickly following Northfield's founding in 1855. Many of them would have had false fronts that made them look bigger and more respectable. As business and competition grew, however, merchants worked to improve their shops. Many wooden buildings in the downtown area were replaced with locally available limestone. The Schofield, Scriver, and Buraker buildings are good examples. But once good brick was available, it became the preferred building material. It was considered to be more attractive and likely reminded people of a New England town. Ephraim Lockwood came to Northfield in 1856, shortly after its founding. A successful merchant, in 1872 he built a new store and opera house, one of the early brick buildings on Division Street. It replaced a dilapidated wood-framed store that was on the site. Lockwood operated his shoe business on the first floor, expanding it four years later to include millinery goods, hats, clothing, and accessories. On the second floor, Lockwood established a performance facility. It was not an elaborate hall, but for nearly 30 years it served its purpose. In fact, one of the most important events in Northfield history occurred in Lockwood's Hall. It happened on October 1, 1874, the night a group of local businessmen met to discuss the establishment of a Norwegian Academy or Normal School in Northfield. The effort was led by local businessman Harold Thorson. Two weeks later, the group, including Thorson, Charles Wheaton, Jesse Ames, A. H. Buraker, and Hiram Scriver, met again. In addition to Thorson's pledge of land worth $2,000, the local businessman pledged an additional $5,400. On November 6th, the group met once more and drew up the Articles of Incorporation for St. Olaf's School. In 1889, the school changed its name to St. Olaf College. The Lockwood Opera House was also host to many traveling shows. In 1877, the spectacular grand historical musical The Court of Babylon was performed over three nights. Tickets were an extravagant 50 cents for adults and 25 cents for children under 12. No reserved seats. Those seats in the hall in general were a challenge. Said one gent in the local paper, The house is uncomfortable for public gatherings, and the man who occupies one of the wooden chairs for two hours during an evening generally promises himself that he will not undergo the torture very soon again. In the early 1880s, Lockwood was compelled to renovate his hall and install permanent seating and a stage. He added a sheet metal cornice, too, dated 1881, to improve the majesty of his store, Opera House. By 1899, however, local displeasure with the facilities at the Lockwood and the increasing reluctance of travelling theatre troops to play there resulted in the construction of the much grander Ware Auditorium, which you can learn more about in another of our podcasts. Lockwood closed his business in 1903, 
and a succession of businesses occupied the storefronts, including a grocery store, an ice cream factory and store, a department store, and a millinery store. The upstairs hall also saw a succession of uses, serving as a roller skating rink, National Guard drill hall, storage facility, and public meeting hall. It was remodeled several times and was converted to apartments at some point. In 1970, a remodeling uncovered the original ceiling, floor, and walls of the Opera House. Judging from historic photographs, we think that the front of the building was remodeled sometime between 1910 and 1920, likely in an effort to make it appear modern. The sheet metal cornice was removed, the entire front was replaced with new brick, and the second floor arched windows were squared up. In the 1930s and early 1940s, the Federated Department Store occupied the first floor of the building. At the end of World War II, the Jacobson family purchased the building and opened their own Jacobson's Department Store. Jacobson served Northfield for the next 58 years. It was a store with a heart. You shopped there because you knew whom you were buying from. Bob, Elaine, Raleigh, and the rest of the Jacobsons knew almost everybody in town and cheerfully took the time to help you find exactly what you needed. And they had at least one of everything. Jacobsons closed in 2003, a victim of the ongoing shift to big-box retailers. Today, a gift shop and a coffee shop occupy the storefront and several loft condominiums occupy the second-floor opera house space. I'll tell you about the Schofield building next. You need to walk to the corner of Division and Fifth Street. You'll see where on your map, and then play the second part of this podcast.